Good afternoon, Singapore. Good afternoon, my fellow Singaporeans. Here I am, uh, Lin Tian, after work again, after 5 p.m. You will excuse me if I do a short episode of after work today because it's just hectic here. It's frantic. And uh, we are all hardly able to breathe because, as you know, tomorrow is nomination day and there is a lot to get ready for nomination day. And I see that um, the PAP have today started to finally announce their lineup. And it's incredible. You know, it's incredible because this is the first time in, you know, uh, living memory as far as I'm concerned, where I have seen the PAP not announce their lineup way in advance as they have done in the past. So obviously they were trying to suss out where the opposition candidates are going. You know, it is a sign of weakness. It is a sign that they are unsure of themselves. And despite all the bold rhetoric, you are seeing a very weak PAP team being put up for GE20. And of course, in the last week, there have been some amazing, um, you know, there, there, there have been some amazing turnaround by them. Uh, I think that is a fair way of putting it. One of their candidates, Ivan, uh, withdrew, Ivan Lim. Um, and that was because um, the netizens got hold of... Um, uh, his past conduct uh, through complaints made by his uh, subordinates. Yes, the Prime Minister says we should investigate this, you know, uh, the, the, the rhetoric coming out of the PAP is that he, the treatment he received was unfair. Yes, the PAP love to smear opposition candidates, opposition leaders, but they don't like it when their own candidates are receiving that type of treatment. Yeah. And um, I'm very happy also to see that one of the IB pages, fabrications about PAP, was shut down by Facebook. And that is uh, deserving because these pages just spew rubbish, fabrications. They smear. They do nothing but smear. They are running dogs of the ruling party. Yeah. And uh, it is good to see Facebook finally closing them down. So at least there is some semblance of fair play here. And of course, another one of their candidates has been shown to have changed his surname this year from an Indonesian surname to a Chinese surname. Well, I suppose it is every person's right to change your name. It is not something I would do because I'm proud of my surname. No matter what happens, I will never change my surname. And, you know, they often say you have to deal with the deck of cards um, you're given in life. And uh, you have to deal with that. All right. And I find it um, interesting to say the least, that the PAP seem to have a lot of problems about identity. And uh, wasn't that the case when um, we had the reserve presidency uh, about electing a Malay president? Because they said that without a Malay president at this point in time, there would be chaos eventually. <laughs> that was how Lee Hsien Loong put it two or three years ago. And, uh, and then it was subsequently shown that the candidate they had in mind was not ethnically a true Malay. 
All right. I I, I don't care what um, the regulations um, say, and you know whether she qualifies or she doesn't qualify under the regulations. But ethnically, all of us know what race we belong to. So, I think it is important in our stage of development that we are very conscious of our identity and we are proud of our identity and that we should not disguise our identity. And I repeat again, you will never ever make me change my surname. Never. Let's come to another topic that has been buzzing around. And so today, Indrani Raja um, said there's no need to vote for the opposition because in the next parliament, there will be 12 NCMPs anyway, and they have the same voting rights as a full member of parliament. Don't ever allow Indrani Raja to fool you, my friends. That has been the narrative of the PAP for the better part of two decades now, in order to persuade Singaporeans of that there is no need to vote in the opposition. The whole rationale is that they want an iron grip on power. Because, remember this, my friends, when it comes to power, it is the numbers in parliament that count. If you have 100% of the MPs in parliament, you have more power than if there are 10 opposition or there are 20 opposition. Remember that. So Indrani Raja, like all the other PAP members who have spoken on this issue before, display a selfish, a selfish interest to cling on to total power. And that is what this election is largely about. You have seen for yourself. You have seen for yourself the consequences of giving the PAP overwhelming power. What has that translated into? That has translated into you losing total control of your CPF, which was promised by them to be returned to you at the age of 55 when the scheme was first propounded and over the years you realize that it is only when you're near death that you might see that last installment payment from your cpf and i never tire of telling people this that is a freedom issue it is a freedom issue because it determines how free you are to live the life the way you want. You have worked hard all your life. You had a certain expectation that you could retire in quiet enjoyment for the rest of your days. But today, you find yourself having to slog past 70 past 80. Now that may be okay to a certain extent for people in sedentary jobs, people with white collar jobs, the professionals. I am a lawyer. Yes, I could possibly, I could possibly work into my 80s. But that is not true for many people who are in more physical jobs. And remember this, that was why in the industrial age, 
and thereafter. The retirement age was 55, and then subsequently it went up. But people in physical jobs should not be expected to work into their 70s or 80s. And that is why people's voices, it is unconscionable. It is unconscionable to hold back people's money beyond 55 if the original promise was to return it to them. You gave them overwhelming power. And as a result, you lost your right to vote for the president you wanted. You may have wanted and the evidence, the anecdotal evidence suggests that if it was a free and open presidential election in 2016, a certain candidate would have won. Obviously, the PAP did not think that a desirable outcome. And so they put on this masquerade known as the reserve presidency. And what did you get at the end of the day? You did not get an ethnically Malay president. You were not even able to choose a Malay president because that president was foisted upon you, was installed. They used the word elected, but there was no election. Everybody knows that. And finally, my friends, you gave them overwhelming power as a result of which they have been given the liberty to shut down on the freedom of expression in this country. And that is dangerous. That is absolutely dangerous. And that is why today in Singapore, you see so many examples of conflicts of interest. And I don't have to name them. You know them yourself because they are in everyday conversation. You find people who are related to each other holding important jobs in our institutions, in our establishments. Anywhere else, that would not be tolerated. And yet, when you speak up about that, you are pothmud. Worse still, you run the danger of being sued for defamation. And that is why, my friends, you must realize that after 61 years of giving them overwhelming power, you have to think of what your next generation deserves. Do you want your next generation to live in a country that is increasingly constricted and your children to feel the claustrophobia of never, never having that freedom, which is why at the end of the day, many Singaporeans have left our shores. And it is sad and it is shameful because we should not be losing any human talent. We should not be losing any indigenous locally born talent. And I never believe it is right to lose local talent and to say that they can be replaced by foreign talent. Total rubbish. That is the equivalent of saying a father is happy for his own children to leave the home and he takes in adopted children or alien children. I don't think you feel that way. I don't think you will feel right. So I leave you with those thoughts, my friends. And... I look forward to seeing all of you again tomorrow. It's nomination day. It is an exciting day. It is a day 
when we start regaining our dignity, our country, our future. Thank you very much. I'm going to take a, one or two questions. Um, so if anyone has those questions, uh, please forward them and I will answer them. Well, there is a comment here that the current president was installed and not elected. Absolutely. And that is what I said earlier. By giving them overwhelming power, you give them the right to change the constitution at will. And that affects your life. That affects your freedom. That affects your dignity. And I know so many of you are so upset because you have come up to me and express those sentiments to say you were so upset that you were not allowed to vote for your president in 2016. How do we change that? We change that by drastically redrawing the balance of power in parliament come the 10th of July. You know, the PAP, I expect them at some point in time to come up with their standard line again fear mongering. Oh, we may lose power. Which was what Kobun Wan famously said towards the end of the general elections in 2015. And I think that had a big bearing on the final results. Don't let them fool you again. And you must know you may cry once, but when you cry twice, it absolutely is a lie. And today, I saw that Li Xianlong was telling the press, I think, I, I didn't read in detail, that this suggestion that the opposition may be wiped out is an exaggeration. No, it is not an exaggeration. It is not an exaggeration if Singaporeans allow fear to overcome them. I ask you to be brave. I ask you to be brave not only for yourself and your friends and your family. I ask you to be brave for the future of your next generation and the society we want to see emerge. Another person has said, Grace Fu, Josephine Kyo, Chan Chun Singh must be voted out. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. Well, I see that um, Josephine Teo has uh, chosen to lead the GRC team in Jalan Besar. And you know People's Voice is going to be contesting in that GRC. I ask you, I ask you to give us the support to vote her out, to kick her out on the 10th of July, because she is one of the most disastrous ministers in Singapore's history. Be brave and kick her out. And for Chan Chun Seng, I need not say more. I have spent a lot of time in the last few months talking about how inept and incompetent he is. And worse than that, worse than that, he has insulted Singaporeans by calling us disgraceful. Why? Simply because people panic, went on a panic buying spree when the COVID crisis hit. But they had every reason to because of the incompetence of the government. As it has now been revealed. And that arrogance has been further illustrated in recent days, my friends. I am sure many of you have seen that video that has gone viral of Teo Chi Hien. When he was doing a walkabout in Pasiris Pongo GRC, I'm, I think that was the location. 
and he came across a man who was drinking his beer at a kopitiam and wearing a face mask with the words, I think, down with the PAP, showing a thumbs down. And I think obviously that upset Kyo Chi Hien. And he was even alleged to have told the man, don't screw things up. That is the height of arrogance and hubris. That is a demonstration of a party that has gone crazy in the belief that it has the divine right to rule forever. A politician is always a servant, never a master. As the voter, you are the master. And come 10th of July, you can tell that politician if he's wanted or not. And I think after 61 years of absolute power on the 10th of July, it is time to end the PAT's leasehold on their office. Worse still, that video shows something which I will characterize as a total absence of respect. Because if you know human dignity, you will never behave or speak to a person in that manner. My friends, I hope you have found this episode enlightening. It may be short, but I enjoy conversing with all of you every evening after work. And tomorrow is nomination day, but I, I shall still be here at 5 p.m. Thank you very much. Thank you.